definitely had um, at least a couple more in that deck somewhere. So um, you want to go over the yeah. Oh, the stupid dog. She doesn't want to play since I've been home. And as soon as I start streaming, she, of course, it's playtime. Yeah. Um, All right. So we have a few cards uh, from uh, this is from Battle for Zendikar. So we have Evolving Wilds, our classic. That I mean, honestly, when's the last set that Evolving Wilds hasn't been in? Um, I think it, it's certainly been in every block for a couple years now. Yeah. Um, it's just it's a really good card to have available yep. in um, limited formats. Yeah. Uh, because it's a value pick in the middle um, for anyone that needs it. It's so you're not like, oh crap, all these are unplayable. You can grab the Evolving Wilds. Uh, in some formats, it's you know actually an earlier pick if you like a three or four color format, but uh, or solid a splash edition. heavy format. Any limited set. Yep. Uh, and by the way, these these cards were spoiled from the uh, re- uh, battle Zendikar versus uh, Eldrazi dual deck. So these are the new cards that are in that box set that are in the Battle for Zendikar set. Okay. So uh, Oblivion Sower. I think did we already talk about this on the stream? We did not. Okay. It was the first card spoiled because it was in the picture frame of the of the set. It and uh, Avenger for Zendikar are the two premium foils in the set. All right. So we have Oblivion Sower, which uh, is a 5-8 for 6, which I guess I don't really know how to judge that. Eight, <laughs> it's, I, don't know if, yeah, I don't know if there's a 5-8 for 6 in any format. So 8 is a big butt. It is. I, I, actually, I, I think that's actually pretty decent, decent stats for, for a colorless. Yes, it's uh, you would have, what six for a six six would be like a, a green creature. Yeah. Well, even green's getting actually better than that because like even in the origins, there's that spider that six for a six six vigilance reach. Yeah. Uh, so you lose a point of power for two points of toughness. Yeah, and 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 getting getting a colorless isn't isn't nothing. I mean, by the time it's six mana, you'll probably have your colors, but still, anybody right. can play this. And then its ability is. When you cast Oblivion Sower, target opponent exiles the top four cards of his or her library. Then you may put any number of land cards that player owns from exile onto the battlefield under your control. So if we just take this out completely face value, that you play it, it's a it's a five eight for six that probably gets you one or maybe two land cards. One, it probably it's probably average of like one point something, yeah. you know. So your one to two lands is you're going to be your average. Now, one thing that we'll go to a little bit later is that landfall is a thing. Um, so that might have a little bit more value than it typically does, but you know, I, I'd play that card even if it like yep. if if it just did what Ryan just described. Like that seems pretty it's good. It's very it's a, it's a playable card as is, and once we start talking about some of the other ones, you'll see already some of the synergies that were with it. And by the way, we created a for our play group for GP Madison. We made a little community page in Google, and uh, I want to say that we only knowing that card, we surmised kind of surmised one of the abilities on one of the other cards that got spoiled today. Um, well, let's just keep going, then yep. we can talk about it. Maybe Dominator Drone is the card that works well with Oblivion Sower, okay. so we'll so now we, next. So Dominator Drone is a, a 2 and a black for a 3-2, which that by itself is okay. Um, it has Devoid, which means that it has no color, and then it has Ingest. Which is whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles the top card of his or her library. Um, so that doesn't really do a whole lot by itself. But if there, I, I'm assuming that that's setting up more effects like this Oblivion Sower. Correct. So one of the things that we did, noted about the Oblivion Sower when it was spoiled and we didn't see anything else was that the way it's worded. It says you may put any number of land cards that player owns exiled uh, from exile onto the battlefield. It doesn't say... There's, there's other cards like this that are worded like, exile the top four cards of your library. You may choose one of those cards and put it into your hand or whatever. It's any land exiled by that player. So if you have a bunch of ingest creatures early on, um, ingesting them for three, four, five cards, and then in conjunction with Oblivion Sower, you hit four more, and let's say four of those are land. Now the scenario of Oblivion Sower for six, play four lands and hold up a counter spell, play a second creature, play a removal spell, like that gets real good real fast. Um, I, I'm not sure how common these effects are going to be, and my thought 
Oh, oh, sorry. And there's there's another thing in there. When Dominator Drone enters the battlefield, if you control another colorless creature, tar- each opponent loses two life. And the reason I think that's not going to be very common is because that card, just with its stats, is extremely good. Like it's very, it's very good. Dominator Drone is a yeah. very good card. So, so I, I, like if Ingest, like if Ingest was super powerful, like this card would be ridiculous because it's already good, even without a, even with its Ingest completely covered up. Right. So it has it. Uh, the, so Dominator Drone has no evasion, so it's easily blocked, mm-hmm. but. If you go, like, now let's go to the next card, Forerunner of Slaughter, uh, two mana, one black, one red for a 3-2. That's Devoid, so it's colorless. Works perfectly with Dominator Drone so that you can play your Dominator Drone on three, uh, have your opponent lose two life off of the Dominator Drone's ability, and then um, attack with the Forerunner, hopefully for three damage. If not, maybe you just trade creatures at that point. Maybe you don't, I don't know. Uh, but it sets up a really nice two into three curve there. Uh, the other thing that's really nice about the Forerunner is that for one mana, target colorless creature gains haste, so you can see the synergy. The Forerunner is really good on turn two. It's also really good on three, um, and later in the game, it, it's just as good as it would be any time it would be on three because it's a three-two haste creature. Yeah. All right, Veteran War Leader. It means allies are back. So allies right. are creatures. Soldier allies. It's a tribal that that tr- triggers off of other allies entering the battlefield. Typically, um, yeah. So veteran war leader is colorless green white. When its power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control, not just allies, and then tap another right. ally you control. Veteran war leader gains your choice of first strike, vigilance, tr- or trample until end of turn. Right. Um, so yeah, the really seems. Uh, so there are definitely going to be times where it's very good. Uh, like if you, like if there's like a raise the alarm type mm-hmm. of effect, uh, especially if it's with like sorcery speed to put two one, one allies in the play or something like that. Uh, and then play this guy on three and you gain the option to like first strike uh, on defense. So like, that's pretty solid. Uh, there are definitely scenarios though, where, you know, you can get blown out by this card uh, on the on the wrong end where you attack as a 3-3 three, three, and your opponent blocks with a 3-3 three, three, and then they kill one of your allies. Like, there's definitely things that can go wrong mm-hmm. with this card. Yeah. It will depend on the quality of the other allies that are printed. And uh, it really wants to go in, like, a token-ish deck. So I'm hoping, like I said, maybe raise the alarm with two allies at instant speed is probably too good. But at sorcery speed for two mana might be good. There was, there was uh, uh, two instant... Two allies that is the speed spell. It was it was at four mana though. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's what you're saying. Okay. Correct. So it exists at four mana, and that was in World Wake, I believe. And that card was uh, draftable in the ally deck, and at times was very good. But if you could make it two mana at sorcery speed, and then drop this guy on three, that would be actually very solid and limited yeah. without I don't think being overpowered. Though I could be wrong. It'll depend on the removal and the set and some of the other things. Uh, retreat to uh, Kazandu uh, is when it's, it's an enchantment for three mana. Uh, so it's going to have to do a lot of work to make us happy, I think. And it is landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or you gain two life. I, uh, I, I've, I'm intrigued by this uh-huh. card. It's... It's, uh, I was talking with Brian before we started. Uh, you don't need a creature in play to gain value off of it. If you did not have the gain two life ability, um, the card might just be unplayable. But the fact that you don't need a creature in play when you play your landfall is good. Um, if you're being aggressive, you can use the first ability. If you're being defensive, you can use the second ability. Um, also, like, I, I, you know, going to magical Christmas land, like playing the Oblivion Sower. <laughs> as a 5-8 and then dropping four lands in the play and making it a 9-13 or whatever, like, probably pretty tough for your opponent sure. to deal with. Although it doesn't have Trample or Annihilator like the like some of the other uh, Eldrazi, so they can chump it forever depending on what's in this set. I, I think, I, I don't know. I think we'll have to learn more about this set. I'm a little bit skeptical. Like, how many times do you need to trigger that for you to be happy? No, it, and so as, I, as I'm obviously talking about this, like, um, all I'm saying, I guess the point I'm making is that there's a lot of green enchantments. Like, even the one that we just saw in M10, where whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield, draw a card. Well, if, if you never have that happen, it's it's terrible. Even if you have a deck, a deck 
uh, that's kind of made for it. Like you could just draw the five creatures that don't have three power and it's, it's never does anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas this card will at least always do something. And when it's good, it's probably really good for you. Um, and especially like if there's anything that can put lands in the play at instant speed or anything like that, like it is a card I'm, I will definitely watch to see, uh, what else gets printed and to see how good the card can be, uh, as, as it is right now, it looks interesting and, uh, I'm not writing it off as a, as a potential fun card in green to, to add to your draft deck. All right. Yeah. So now we have Sheer Drop, which is colorless, colorless white for destroy target tapped creature at sorcery speed. Um, so it's white assassinate, I guess. And then yep. uh, is a new ability, which is Awaken. And Awaken is an alternate casting cost. Um, so you can, and basically it seems like it lets you turn a creature or a land into a creature. That's right. So if you read Awaken there, um, if you pay the six, you get a, one of your lands becomes a zero, zero elemental with haste and you get to put three plus one plus one counters on it. So one thing to note is casting this card for six with six lands in play does not get you three damage in addition because uh, the land will be sure. tapped when you cast it. So to to get the three damage extra with the elemental, uh, you will need um, a seventh land. Um, one thing that I don't know how much it matters, but you don't actually have to put it on a land that's not a creature. You could put it on one that's already been awakened. You're right. Yep. I don't, I don't know what... Like, I, that's... Uh, I'm not sure how common that will be to do, but it is something you can do. Yep, that's a good, a very good observation. Uh, you don't have to target the land. You know, it doesn't say target a non-creature land. It says target a land that gets plus mm -hmm. the counters, and it's already a zero L zero zero elemental, so nothing will change on the base stats. Yeah. Uh, I do. I actually the the awaken card is uh, so at landfall was a fun ability. Um, I actually like this. Any mm -hmm. any. Um, Abilities like this, multi-kicker, um, flashback, where you can get additional value from a spell yeah. by paying more mana later in the game is generally something that's very good and limited. Uh, you're just going to be certainly really happy to sheer drop for three a lot of times. Uh, and when you draw it off, you know, in the 12th turn of the game and you can actually pay six for it, like, that's so even better than paying three for it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I... I... I, I, I agree. I like I like abilities like this because they smooth out games. Like yep. the you know, having a, a card that's good on three and even better on six is a lot better than having a three and a six because sometimes you'll get the six drop early and then you'll be sad, and sometimes you'll get a three drop late and then you'll be sad. Um yep. so I, I, I tend to really agree with that. One thing that I'm a little bit interested in since the, there's allies I bet you that means there won't be levelers, which that makes me a little bit sad. Yeah, you're right. Um, and, and obviously there's there's probably another ability. I would guess there's two to three more abilities mm. or keywords to be spoiled. They're not all here. Mm. Um, but this is a really good sneak preview at kind of what the set's trying to do. Ingest makes me think there's going to be cards that interact with cards in exile. Yep. Um, possibly even your own. So, like, there may be some spells... So not only might your opponent be trying to ingest you, but maybe there's some value to be gained from, uh, you know, spells that maybe are cheaper or provide an additional effect or just straight up exile one of your cards and then you somehow have the ability to play it as well. So maybe there's this sort of uh, uh, tension of you trying to use your own exiled cards before your opponent can, can use them, uh, which sounds kind of interesting and fun. I want I want there to be elixir of epicac that it's uh, all both players put all ingested cards onto the battlefield. So so if you're the ingest so if you're ingesting the other person's cards, you get all theirs and they get all yours. Yes. Or your own. Yes. Yes. What? <laughs> both. Uh, you get each each person gets each other's. Oh. Well. Okay, right. Yeah, that's not like you just swap all of your uh, exile cards. Yeah, I was I was mainly making a joke. But it could work. It, it, it could. Right? Like if you're trying to actively ingest them and they're not playing spells that do that and suddenly you just get six permanents or whatever, yeah. like that's sweet. Yeah. <laughs>
Um, so, so yeah, that's what we've got yeah. so far. And I think, and like I said, I, I think the conclusions that we're looking at are some of the speculation we do. Like, I don't think that's, you know, those are not unreasonable things for us to, that could be abilities. Where did it go? That's a little bit unnerving. <laughs> 